The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Thank you uh, to John and Steve for three great hours here. We've got uh, Tuesday. You've got options. Uh, just a full program here at TFNN. And if you're looking at the live pictures, you'll see there's a rectangle formation in the E-minis. Yesterday, we did get the Friday Chapman wave yellow light that suggested that regardless of what happens, there should be negative activity in the Dow. It was pre-market, then it was at, at the very end of the day. Amazing how that works. We're on our way to leg D and the S&P. Nice move up. Remember, in a bull phase, you want to go um, no more than one to two days, if you're looking at the daily chart, of um, a rest. Within one to three days, you've got to be making new highs. Speed is your friend in a bull market. Speed is your friend in a bear market. And what we're looking at here is it depends on the time. I love when you look at time frames. Look at the time frame here. Rectangle formation, eh, sideways uh, trading range in the 120-minute chart. Whoops. Daily chart, very strong. Weekly chart suggested we're going to go to leg D in the E minis above 2,109.75. And in the S&P, it's going to be above 2,119. Where did it go to? Oh, I just messed up that chart. <laughs> SPX, I thought that was what a nice transition I'm making. No, hit the key. There you are. SPX.X. There it is. You've got a peak D. If there's no new high bar this today above 21.14.86, but you've got leg D starting this week, I believe, coming to your local uh, chart this week, 2.19.60 or higher. That's what I think. And um, when we're looking at these different charts, you'll see how oh, I should have finished this, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Now we just had a consolidation. So this is E. So it goes D, E. Oh, this could be E, F slash B. F slash B, because the stochastic didn't go under 80% of the MACD is still strong. Nice. Okay. So let's get rid of those, move it away. And you can see that we've got an F slash B in the monthly chart. Everything looks kind of, kind of good right now. Now, let's run the numbers. The Dow is INDU. I N D U. There we go. The Dow is at uh, 18,136, up 21. Peak C is going to be made if we don't go above 18,197. Point you remember, I have to get 18,205.93 because we extended. And as soon as that happens, this extends the leg C, or if it's tomorrow, it'll be leg D. Number one. Number two is the weekly chart. Let me open this up. I, I don't like messy charts. It's beginning to look a little messy. Uh, how can I get? I, I'm going to unmess it. Okay, let's get rid of that. Don't need it. Right there. Away. Away, away, damn spot. Shakespeare. Okay. All right. And get rid of that. Uh, we'll keep that for now. So we're in a rising wedge formation. You've got the next resistance point will be at, in the S&P, between 20, uh, this is the, the Dow, between 18,000, um, 290s and 18,360s. That's going to be very strong resistance, and I believe that's where we're headed. And that'll I increase the, uh, that candle because we've got all of March to go, and we almost be at March, uh, March's conclusion, um, the beginning of next week. So this is going to be very interesting how it plays out, because the stochastic starting to decline. MACD is flattening out. A flat stochastic and a flat MACD. You remember in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology? I talk about it. I wonder what it's under now. Um, find flat MACD. Uh, let's see if we can find it. 
searching. There it is. The flat MACD often maintains the trend of the last signal, a buy mode in this case. That's the, that's in the chart that we're looking at. And what we've been looking at in, in this particular instance is hmm, mouse. Find that mouse. Do it again. Hey, what's going on here? Hmm, that's very interesting. All right, let's just get out of this. Out, out, out. Oh, it's just, hey, the mouse. There it is. Okay. So what we're looking at here in the Dow is that the weekly chart has had most of the activity above that black line. That is the nine-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. And we'll see how long that's going to last. The moment over the next three weeks, the moment that 17,942, let's call it 17,900, is pierced to the downside, that's going to be a big problem um, because that'll suggest that we're finally having that big consolidation that I've been talking about. Not yet, but we're waiting for it. Okay, let's go on. We've got the uh, comp indexes. So numbers, the Dow has 18,050 to 18,030 key support. Uh, Dow, I think, is in a break above uh, top side, and it'll go into the 18,220s, uh, and that'll suggest we've got got a pattern, a V-shaped pattern in the daily that goes towards the 18,288 uh, uh, all-time high. The S&P, SBX.X, has a support. It's at 21.06, up a dollar eighty. It's lagging a little bit, and it's going to have support in the 2,092 area on the daily. But the moment it breaks above uh, 21, can I get that? Yeah. 21, I wonder what's happening to this mouse. It's periodically, I, that happens with a battery mouse, but not with one like this. Okay, so let's just do that. One second. Okay, snap, snap, and we're back. Okay, there are. So 21. 15, let's say 2117s will be the next level to watch. As soon as we get there, you can expect the 2119, um, 2119.59 level to be challenged. And the moment it goes above that by one penny, you start your leg D. And I anticipate that that's going to happen. Now let's go to the IWM. The IWM is very strong. It's in leg B, maybe even a P, maybe leg B continues today, otherwise it's a peak B. If it doesn't take out yesterday's high, monthly chart is going to the up channel, up, up track resistance area in the 129 to 130 area. It's right now at 126.20 and it's in leg E in the weekly. Now, I, my suggestion here is to watch this very closely because I'm anticipating that the moment we make leg D in the S&P, we start the countdown for some kind of a reversal, and that reversal could be quite sharp. A lot's going to depend on whether the IBB, the NASDAQ Biotech, or BBH, uh, the NASDAQ, or the general biotech sector, has in fact had a, a, a chink in the armor. This, this, this is the first Friday's reversal and yesterday's down move was the first real sign to say that we're getting very oh question in the dead. Basil, any thoughts on what will take the Nasdaq high in the months to come? Apple at peak E monthly right now and IBB quite extended here with G C monthly. Hey, I agree exactly that we're looking at certain factors that are going to be very important. It's key stocks that become part of the technicals of the um, indices themselves. Apple, I think, is just struggling. It's stuck here. I would not be surprised if the high that was made, this all-time high of 133.60, let me just type that in, 133.60, um, is not taken out in this move up. And at about 129.50 to 130.90, we get an A-shape reversal and we start heading down. Um, yes, yes, yes. Not a statement you're asking me. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the answer that I think is a potential <laughs> answer that is accurate. But of course, accuracy has history, um, needs history to verify, and we we don't have that yet. We are still in the moment of making the history. It isn't post. It is still 
tree. Um, so at this particular point, you can see that Apple's only up 57 cents, 127.78. It's really not leading at all. This is taking a well-earned rest. And my suspicion is that there's a real good chance we might make a peak E in the monthly, a peak D in the weekly, and uh, the last leg up was a peak GSSC with a round number high the previous day of 133 and a close. It was a double 133 round number. The next day squeaked just a little high to 133.60 and then started on its way down. So this says to me, uh, keep watching it, and I'm going to now change this trend line. Remember, trend lines are there for your convenience. Don't feel embarrassed that you had it one place, and then all of a sudden it's moved. It moves for a reason. Look, if you have three hits, that means it's a very important line. And that says that's the resistance that even if it bounces up, it'll probably come back and test that trend line. Okay, so let's go on. We've got high-grade copper, which was acting very mediocre just uh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, had a very nice spike to the upside. Weekly chart is starting to improve. I still see it as just the H pattern that goes to a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. What do I mean by that? I mean by that, that it is the, um, the pattern that we often look at, chapter 17. Here we go, chapter 17. It's the H pattern, and here it is. It goes from the H to a lowercase, lowercase H to a lowercase M. And that's what we're really looking at right now. These arch formations, that's what we're looking at in so many of the different stocks, especially the commodities that have come down so sharply. Okay, so the GLD is unched at 114.29. Gold itself has had a very nice move. It's a count trend move. But it's a move that has the potential for uh, um, while the dollar is consolidating for the next maybe two weeks or so. I think that gold has a chance to have a very nice bounce. One of the reasons why we've put ourselves into the into the gold area first time in I don't know how long, but that's the way it is. We'll see what happens. And 11.97 is going to be the resistance in the continuous gold contract. It's up 240 right now. And the daily is still a single leg A up. And if you put that together with DXY, which is the dollar, you see the dollar's attempting here after leg B down to have a little bit of a bounce, but the technicals are still awful in the daily. They were fantastic. Now they're coming down. The weekly is just starting to dip. But it's only a dip so far. 96.23 is a nine-period exponential moving average that is holding very well. Uh, there was a, a Netflix was mentioned in the den uh, by J and J. Yeah, nice leg B. This is that same kind of move. I'm expecting an H to an M pattern as well in Netflix. Um, let's go on now. I wanted to look at the TLT. TLT is of course the. Oh, isn't that interesting? We got a break coming up. The TLT is in leg B. It's holding very well at 131.56. This is the Lehman 20 year T bond fund. It's gone a little higher than I expected in the bounce, so I can raise it even more now. So that says we could go to 132.5, 133 in a quarter. Hey, very nice. I'll be back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. 
While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. I'm just, I was at a question about the junior gold miners. I want to actually go to the, uh, so we can go back to the currencies in a moment. Uh, dollar TGX, is that right? No, just DGX. DGX is the <clears throat> Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF in a strong leg B up in the daily. Weekly chart did not come down to the lowest left side lows. <clears throat> it's making slightly higher lows. We want to see higher highs as well. So trading at 1990, 1969, um, down six cents. You want to see a move over the next three weeks that really takes out. I don't know if we can do that. 23.22. Let's look at the GDXJ because you want to look at the 200%. I think it's 200% long. I'd rather look at the root because um, that's the one that I have most information on. So this is A, leg B in the weekly chart. It went to an A. That was an A minus because it, it broke below the left side low. So that's the A right now. This is just a plain old A minus uh, arch formation, just exactly what I was showing you in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. So the question here is, and this is what I'm looking at. You see, gold, <clears throat> right at this moment, gold is a little bit, <clears throat> it's got its own momentum, and I love that. I think that's very important. But at the same time, I think that the dollar, because it had such a spectacular move up, just like the IBB, it wants to do a little retesting of not the highs, but a retesting of about the 50% retracement at some point. It should do it fairly soon. That should start to fail. And if that fails, that's when you're going to see 
um, that's when you're going to see an even better move up in the goals. That's going to be the key. Absolutely. Let me explain what I'm looking at. In the uh, GDXJ, the junior, this is the Market Vectors Junior Gold Miner, uh, ETN, I believe it is. Maybe it's an ETF. The monthly chart really looks quite, quite terrible. Um, it's, it hasn't got much of a history just from 2009. If you remember, it was 2000 or was it seven? You know, I always forget. I should just Im implant it, just fix it in my mind uh, once and for all. 2009. Yep, 2009. Oh, isn't that funny? Look, 2009, September, 1954.50. That was the high in September of gold. This is, um, let's just say the high was in September because the price can always change because it gets smoothed out. Uh, in fact, I have 1949.17, it's not right. 1954.50 because it keeps getting smoothed out. Why? Because this is in fact a continuous contract. So all the different monthlies have to get smoothed out. So what we're looking at is that was the high. Well, lo and behold, isn't it just typical that the GDX J, GDX, they discovered that it would be fun and very beneficial to have a junior gold contract. So they did this. And when did it come out? Just after, <laughs> I love the way that, just after gold had made its all time high, uh, made its high. 2009 high and it comes out and it, it comes out at um in november of 2009 opens at round number 104 goes to 113 comes down to 98 and then what does it do goes to 159 179.44 um december of 2010 and then plop the nine period exponential moving average becomes a resistance. So now it's at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I didn't realize it was as long as that. So that's eight. So that's five, 2000, yeah. So that's five years. And that is really interesting. So that's eight halves, four years, it's actually almost five, from the top that it made. Okay, this is really interesting. So it comes out as an IPO um, when gold had already made its top. Remember when we were, <laughs> unbelievable how this happens. Do you remember the SOX, um, the SOX index? Uh, S, uh, let's see, SMHs. The SMHs, when did they come out? They came out in 2000, in May of 2000. Two months, three months after March, April, May. Three months after the all-time high. Isn't that amazing how these things happen? I'll be back, Basil Chapman, and we'll do a little bit more work on this, and we'll look at gold a little bit more uh, in depth. Be right back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by high concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just finishing up something here very important. Wow. D-E. Oh, I must redo this. Make sure I've got it right. This is the monthly SOX index. Anyway, um, I'm going back to the GDX. So GDX right now. Whoops, don't write it there. I'm just getting used to a new, key, new keyboard, a little mini. I like these mini things, mini keyboard, got a mini mouse. Yeah, inch by three inch middle mouse. I got all these different uh, computers. When you jump from one uh, computer keyboard to the other, it's not that easy. It's like going from the uh, E flat clarinet to the uh, bass clarinet. Uh, so, okay, here we go. So the GDX, so the question was GDXJ, which is the junior. So as I see it, this is real simple. The monthly chart is saying, wow, there's just no activity, no strength, nothing for months. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth month of just the tiniest little, this is the smallest monthly candles we've had, consecutive candles in uh, sideways in ages. We've had them in direction, but not sideways direction with a slightly lower low this this month. So that says to me a lot, and the MACDs rallied and stochastic rated, you've got nothing in the price. That says we've got to think of this. This is a more a deflationary period than an inflationary period. Perhaps we're in for a really big inflationary period at some point. But as far as I'm concerned right now, we're just looking at the H pattern that can go to yet another arch formation. I don't expect anything more. Nice percentage, no question about it. But other than a bounce, until I start to see 
those uh, f um, gold buy and sell little stores that you pass wherever you go until I see them where I'm looking at for rent. Until they're out of business, I don't think we're going to get a major, major gold uh, move to the upside. Hey, that's just the way I'm looking at it. Um, but in the meantime, from 2472 in the GDXJ, down seven cents, there's a lot of support to 2440. It actually shouldn't really go to the 248 next uh, uh, 200 period simple moving average support. It should actually try to go a little higher first. The 2530s is really important. Why? Because the moment it goes above that nine period moving average of 2520, uh, 25, wrong one, this one here, 25, hmm, it's hard to see. Yeah, it's called 2520. As soon as it closes above that, it says, okay, I'm on my way to try my best to make another arch formation. But I have made lower lows and lower highs. So that's not a good thing. Okay, so the answer is about the GDXJ, um, I, what it was really the question of the JNUG, I'm, I'm using the root, which is JDXJ, because the root should really be gold. But it's trading because it's a, a junior gold miner. And some of the gold miners, juniors especially, are having really mixed results. Some are acting beautifully and some are just struggling. So my suspicion is we've got fairly limited upside. And what you can expect is that doji candle of the 27th of February at 2687. If we can get there, that'll be a marvelous move because at that point, you will have seen whether the euro, they have to go together. The euro is able to climb from 1.089 into the one point. That doji candle is way higher. Into the 1.27 to 1.13 area. So that's going to be very important. Mm, yeah. And um, so that's the way I'm going to look at that at this particular point. I think the weight of evidence says that the downside, while the downside is forming a base, giving good support, that doesn't mean to say it has to go up. That's the big question. And if it does go up, there is so much selling that's been going on. I think unless it makes a V-shaped recovery and gold, I'm going to go back to gold because it, that's going to assist the gold miners. Um, unless gold can spiral into anywhere around here, 1, 1207 to 1212, at this point is at 1189. Until it can really do that in a V-shaped recovery as the dollar shows no, no uh, inner strength at all from this move that it's had, uh, days like today should fizzle by the end or if it rallies tomorrow, by tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, it should be on its way back down again. That would say that instead of the rectangle formation that I drew in the dollar as a consolidation, in fact, it's taking... Uh, a much bigger spill, and you've got to have respect for the fact that it could come all the way back to the lip. Remember what I spoke about in the cup formation, that when it breaks out, sometimes it likes to test the lip. Well, that lip was, in fact, at, um, well, it's already done there. So it's tested that lip. Now you've got the next one, which is 92.63. That is way down. That's five points down. I, I just don't, I think there's going to be a good rally before it comes back that far. Okay, hope that helps. And if I, if you want, I'll look at the uh, British pound, BP. Oh, I used to have this all notated. I bet it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, the British pound is really struggling. This is what I always do whenever I have a, a very sharp move up and down like this. I just grab my toolbar and I, and I go like that, outline it. And say, okay, rectangle formation, larger rectangle formation has a low of the 16th. I think it was the 16th. Oops. The low of the 16th, no, the 18th of 1.4625 in the British pound as major support and the high of 1.5145 as a tremendous um, resistance. My guess is we've got a much smaller rectangle there and you will know it's going higher. If it breaks 1.505 on the upside, the British pound continuous contract or if it breaks under 1.48. All right. Um, so, yeah, DXP. Let me just see that DXP. No, dollar DXP. Oh, DXP is the DXP 15. 
No. All right. I'm not sure about that. Uh, DXPS. DXPS. That's the one. Uh, that is the uh, Wisdom Tree UK Hedge. Oh, okay. Well, that's looking A, <clears throat> B, C. It's still looking good in the weekly chart, and that should be going higher. So that's so that could pull back a little bit um, to 2681. It's a 2707 DXPS. Is the Wisdom Tree UK Hedge? Let me write that down because I never followed that. DXPS. B, P, H. Good. Okay. Now, um, a couple of things that I wanted to do. I wanted to show you, <clears throat> within the context of the Chapman wave, we always like to look for Ds. So merely you're looking A, pulls back. Higher peak B, pulls back. Higher peak C, pulls back. Higher peak D, and that's where other things can happen. What I warned my subscribers this morning was that goal uh, that that General Motors had done fabulously. But it really struggled lately, um, and it got to a D. And that D was at 39, oh, round number 39. I didn't see it was a round number. A round number 39. And then what did it do? Round number, high. And then it went kaplop. And that kaplop is serious because um, it came at a time, right there. It came at a time that says uh, it's a leg E in the weekly, and it's a retracement in in the monthly, and I I think that General Motors is, I believe they've turned the corner. I think they really have. I'm beginning to see way more General Motors cars wherever I go. It doesn't matter which state I'm in. I look around and I see far more General Motors cars, the crews and all sorts of things. Um, I, I think um, they've got something there. So I want to watch how it holds 37.11 on any further pullback in the next two weeks. If it cuts under it, starts to go back to the 36s, that'll be on my radar for my subscribers to say, hey, when General Motors is finished coming down, we've got to look at it very seriously because – uh, two things are happening. One is on the shorter term. Remember, I, I, my, I haven't got the proof yet. I've got a lot of evidence that self-selected evidence, not real proof for self-selected evidence. Then I think we're in about week three or maybe or something like that of a, a mini recession. And that's why I was looking at General Motors. But then you've got Ford that's acting quite nicely. So maybe it's an individual thing. Ford is holding well. It's not great, but it's acting quite well. So if I'm correct in um, looking at so many aspects that are just giving me hints that there's a slowdown going on right now, um, you're not seeing it in the uh, home builders because the HGX is trying to challenge the last high of 236.51. It's just a point away. Um, and that's good action. But this is kind of what I'm looking at. So we'll see how this, this pans out. A um, couple of things that I wanted to do. I wanted to look at, so that was General Motors in leg D and maybe a peak D today. But look at this, WLL. Um, WLL is, this is where it went to. It went from a low Whiting Petroleum is peak E in the monthly chart. Horrible. Uh, peak, I think it was D, uh, and peak F in the weekly. And then look what happens. It makes a peak D just the other day at 41.57. And out of the blue, and it goes sideways, so it looks like it's coming down. Kaplop today dropped 7.44. So they've got a secondary offering. They've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. But it took out the low on the left side of the 2nd of March of 3187. Yeah, it's trading towards the high of the day. But this is something to keep a, keep a note of. Anyway, I just wanted to show that PD can, can have uh, certain effects um, in the Chapman Wave methodology. So Twitter is the question. Twitter act, oh, what a nice candle. Leg D in the weekly chart, retracement. Now, this is... This is really tough, and I'll explain why it's tough. Because if Twitter has just started its first big move to the upside and takes out the high that was made in October of 55.99, all-time high 74.73, that low that was made at 29.51 could be a low of significance. 
And what I'm looking at here is for the first time, we've got leadership in the new tech. And that to me, I've been waiting for this uh, for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that as we take a breather in some of the sectors, fund managers are just dying to look at something new. It doesn't matter whether it's something old that's now something new, like a Microsoft, et cetera, or preferably something just brand new for some of those more adventurous um, fund managers. And my suspicion is that with, hmm, I'm so sorry, I missed this yesterday. Nice candle too. Big breakout, it's up 2.28 TWTR Twitter, uh, Twitter Inc. And it is um, up 2.26 at 50.72, the all-time high is at 74.73, uh, but the last high was 55.99. And that 55.99 looks like it wants to be approached. And it wants to be approached in a good time sequence. Um, let me just double check here. Look, you can go like that and like that. And that's to, let's take it to this candle here, right there, that's a midpoint. Let's go to the right. Okay. Oops. Disappeared. There it is. Make it green. Yeah, this is very interesting because what does it say then? If I'm talking about some kind of a pullback in the market, um, it says, uh, not for me, baby. I, I want to be moving higher. I want to retest at 55.99 level, and I might do it by April the 15th, April, the week of April the 17th. Oh, very nice. Okay, that's fine with me. Nothing I can do about it. I'm just following the chart. Look at that. And there's your resistance line. So the next target on the upside of resistance this week will be at 53, 53.50s, or if it's next week, it's 54. So between 53 and a half and 54 by next week, if everything works out, but it's very nice action. Stochastic at 84, MACD looking good. And this, I have to call leg B. I should give it an alternate count. I don't see why I want to give it an alternate count when the MACD is just about across positive. And stochastic strong and on balance volume. Yes, it's looking very nice. Yep, it's going to be a taxing day for this. So now, let's, so that was a Twitter. And then somebody said Facebook. Yep, I'll be looking at Facebook. Very nice action. Um, also, probably a brand new leg B. And that's suggesting in the daily charts that we should go into late this week, into early next week, as some kind of topping action starts to unfold. All right. Wow. Now, the other thing that there were two things I wanted to talk about. One was I wanted to get to the rotation out of some of the stocks into what sectors? Well, it's the sectors that always um, are on our radar, but it's divided up very distinctly now. You've got your high techs, but now you've got early high techs, you've got new high techs. Then within the high techs, you've got um, instruments like an Amazon or uh, a Facebook that is really just using the high tech in a very high tech way. And then you've got others that are actually pure high techs. And uh, some of them seem to be struggling. So I'll be back. Basil Show. I'd love to take some calls. 877-927-6648. Guys up 10. SFEs up one and a quarter. I'll be right back. And um, yes, I'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N A D E X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks, so we're back. So uh, we're looking at Taser. Yep, Taser's acting quite well. It's another one in a different area, but still looking quite good. NASDAQ stock. Um, I just want to quickly look at the Great Britain Dow. This is, this is the Dow uh, Jones UK Stock Index, or e e index, they call it. So the price... It's, it's different, but the actual makeup of the chart is really close. I've got this in a leg B at the moment in the in the daily, but that's not the issue. The issue is, I think, I have no choice but to call it leg C in the weekly chart. And that would suggest that Great Britain could not um, make a top until, a D that is, until th uh, three weeks time. That means... All of next week has to be lower to make a peak C, and then the next week has to make a new recovery high. That'll give you your D. And that, that goes with the um, time measurement that I've got of April in the monthly chart as possibly being, remember I had that 43-month uh, extension left to right in the Dow, and now we've gone to the 35th or 36th. 45th or 46th month. Well, in Great Britain, one we've got next month as is the green line right there. Now, this is going to be very interesting as well because look, the DE Dow, which is uh, the German Dow Jones German stock proxy, leg D in the, in the monthly, leg C, and probably a peak C if there's no new high this week. Well, it's only Tuesday because the entire week. So it's C in the weekly. A peak E was made in the in the daily, and now we've got that same pattern we've been looking at everywhere. 
It's the Chapman Wave falling axle, expanding cone formation. If you want it to sound very technical, expanding cone, I like the falling axe because it can give you a one-to-one -one on the upside. So, so far, it's about to test the resistance. Hey, this is nice action. So we've got just a moment to go now, uh, and then we're going to go to the options hour. Don't, don't forget, folks, we've got programming going on all day. It's just as Tuesday is one of those great days where we extend all the way through. And uh, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about was the VIX index um, in relation to uh, what's happening in the market. So what happened is we got that little bounce uh, three weeks ago. And then last week, instead of running above the nine period moving average, we only rallied partly above and then we closed sharply lower. And now this week is underneath. So I'm taking this pattern right now. I'm going to take it away. I don't want to infuse anything that's not there. But I'm going to say that there's, there's an arch on the top. I don't really want to put that in either. I want to stick with the cup formation. And the cup formation says that at 1271, there is buying pressure in the, in the, in the market at, in, the, in the VIX index, VIX. And if that continues to come down as the weekly chart of the S&P goes towards its leg D, then we might find that the 12.20 to 11.90 area is going to be tested. The most recent though was 10.28. That was July of 2014. So selling pressure in the VIX equals buying pressure in the in the general market. And today it's very interesting. The VIX is down 69 cents. That shows buying pressure. But the buying pressure is either showing up because it's holding the market up because the market wants to pull back, or it's just not being reflected by the price of the indices at this particular time. It is in the QQQ or the comp index, which is up nine. So the QQQ has continued to act better um, in certain circumstances. And it has this resistance right here. It's taken out the one. The next one is going to be at right there. So if the Qs in the next few days can get over 109.30, 109.02 is actually the line, but 109.30, then immediately the left side high of 109.42, the peak D recovery high becomes the focus. So keep in mind, VIX index, let's just do that one more time as we sign off. And we're going to go to uh, Chad Coco. It's a great option show. And I'm just saying at 1271, that's buying pressure. If the VIX suddenly turns around, goes above 1350, this market will start to pull back sharp. Thanks for being here. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.